To find the remainder, we're going to use the remainder theorem. We could go ahead and do long division or synthetic division here, but really it's easiest just to use the remainder theorem. And what we can state that for the remainder theorem is, if we substitute the factor, the zero term, which is in this case is x equals negative 3 from the factor, so this x comes from here, the this is equal to the remainder. Okay, so when I plug negative 3 in, I get 3 times negative 3 to the power of 5 minus negative 3 cubed plus 10 times negative 3 minus 8. And I'm just going to work that out. 3 to the negative 3 to the power of 5 is going to be 200 and 43 negative minus negative 27 minus 30 minus 8. So working this out, this is negative 729 plus 27 minus 30. I'm going to combine those two terms, so I'm going to minus 38. Okay, so working this out, I get negative 700, and it looks like 740. Okay, so the remainder then is seven, negative 740. Now, not only that, if since we know that f of negative 3 equals negative 740, that's not only a remainder, but it also gives us a coordinate on the graph of that function. So that represents a a, a point on that graph. So what we want to do with polynomials is we want to factor them. To factor this, what we have to do is we have to we have to guess one factor and then break it down into a quadratic. Once we get it to the quadratic, we can then uh, use quadratic formula or continue factoring. So in this case here, when I to figure out my the find the, the a factor, I need to use a remainder theorem, and to, the possible factors are going to be based on these two parts here. So my possible factors are going to be plus minus 1, 2, 4 from the, from the negative 4. But we also have the, fa the, the rational factors, which are going to be 1, 4 divided by 2. Sorry, it's going to be 1 divided by 2, 2 divided by 2, 4 divided by 2. So we get plus minus 1 half, which is a unique factor. Now, when we test this, we're just going to use, start with the easiest one, so f of 1. So we plug in f of 1, we get 2 plus 7 minus 5 minus 4. This is equal to 0. This means that using a remainder theorem, we get a remainder of 0. That means that x minus 1 must be a factor. Okay, so then if it's a factor, we know it divides evenly into this expression. So I'm going to use synthetic division here, 2, 7, negative 5, negative 4. So bring that down, negative 1 times 2 is negative 2. Subtract, negative 1 times 9 is negative 9. Subtract, we get positive 4. Negative 4 minus 4 gives me the remainder of 0. We have to check, make sure that we're getting a remainder of zero, because if it's not a remainder of zero, something went wrong either in our analysis using the remainder theorem or in our synthetic division. So at this point, we end up with this polynomial. I'm just going to highlight this. This polynomial here, it's a quadratic. We end up with 2x squared plus 9x plus 4. That's a factor, and our original factor that we had figured out was going to be the x minus 1. So we have now partially factored. We need to check to see if the other, the blue factors, blue quadratic still factors. So I'm just going to check that. 
So I end up with 2x squared. There's my 8x squared. I know that multiplies to 8 and adds to 9. That's going to be 2 and, sorry, 8 and 1. Factoring this, I get 2x uh, plus 1. And this becomes x plus 4. So factoring this fully then, we end up with x minus 1, and then x plus 4, 2x plus 1. That's our fully factored form. Now we can use this factor to solve equations and inequalities, because this polynomial really is the same as what we started with. I just have to first of all make it to equal to 0. So 2x cubed plus 7x squared minus 5x plus 4, oops, not plus, but minus 4. Minus 4 is less than 0. We know we can express this polynomial as 2x plus 1, x plus 4, x minus 1 is less than 0. We now have the factored form of this polynomial. So what that means is we know what the zeros are. We know that we have a zero at one, negative one half. We have a zero at positive one and negative four. This is a polynomial that is going in this direction. Okay, it, it's positive leading coefficient, so it goes in the positive slope direction. And to solve this inequality, then, we want to know where it's less than 0. Well, less than 0 means below 0. That means these portions here. So then to solve this, the solution to this inequality is going to be x is less than negative 4. x is going to be between negative 1 half and positive 1. On a number line, we can express it this way. The solution is from negative 4 this way, and between negative 1 half and 1. And it looks like that on my number line. Okay, I'm just going to highlight the different parts here. This portion is going to be based on that. And this portion is going to be that part of the number line. So we use factoring of polynomials to get zeros, and the, having the zeros allows us to do different things like solve equations. In this case, we're solving inequalities. We still need our boundaries for inequalities, so the zeros are still relevant here.